Okay. Um, let's move on to interstellar dust. We've already gotten just a glimpse of what dust does to light, which is block it. Um, but there's a few other effects as well. So the dust can emit again, according to its temperature, mostly in the infrared. And then there are three effects that are kind of complementary to each other. They occur at the same time, but they produce different um, colors that we see. One of them is extinction. That's the effect of white blocking that we already talk about. The other two um, are reddening and scattering. So um, reddening and scattering are kind of related. And so I'll show you a picture of this to show you how they work together. Um, but first, so this is an uh, illustration of how dust actually blocks the visible range, but glows in the infrared. So this is a region of the Orion Nebula called the Horsehead Nebula. I guess it sort of looks like a horse's head. And in the uh, visible range, it looks like a dark feature. But when we look in the infrared range, that same dark feature now appears bright because it's emitting in the infrared. Um, and now that you're looking in the infrared, you can also see this area of a newborn star. So this is kind of a sneak preview for Wednesday, I guess. Looking in the infrared allows us to see regions of star formation. If dust glows in the infrared, then which of these could represent the glow from a dust cloud? And I'm seeing most votes for D, and that's exactly right. So if we look at the, um, you know, the infrared, or sorry, the spectrum of C, B, and A is all at relatively high energies. If I use this color bar at the bottom as my, uh, you know, marker of where the visible range is, then it looks like C peaks just at the edge of the violet. B and A are both in the uh, UV portion. And then D is the only one that peaks in the infrared. So this would most likely represent the uh, glow from a dust cloud, whereas C would be a, you know, a hot star, B an even hotter star, and A would be an extremely hot star. All right, so there's two effects that we can see, well, at the same time when we look at a, a dust cloud, but we don't always see them in the same image. So um, this is an illustration of, again, Barnard 68. And on the left, we have the effect called extinction, which is just the idea that the total amount of light that gets through the cloud is lower because of the presence of the cloud. The reason it's lower is because some of the, some of the light that's passing through the cloud is getting scattered off sideways. And so it's not reaching us. But some of this light does pass through the cloud. We just don't see it in the visible because it's only the longest wavelengths of light that actually make it through. So this effect is called reddening. The idea that the bluer wavelengths are scattered out of the cloud, and so only the redder wavelengths come through. And so in particular, this image on the right is taken in the infrared, and you can see there's plenty of light coming through the cloud in the infrared, even though it is definitely you know, dimmer because it's missing all the blue light component. So this effect of making you know, the light dimmer overall is extinction. And this effect of uh, removing the blue light is called reddening. So an illustration of that is here. If you have some interstellar dust cloud, then the short wavelength light is preferentially scattered away to the sides. And so uh, we would see that light if we were looking at the dust cloud uh, from a star that's kind of shining on it sideways. And that's exactly what we see, and we call this a reflection nebula around the Pleiades, for example. So here we're not seeing the Pleiades light shining through the cloud. We're seeing basically uh, reflections from starlight. So um, all these stars are shining on all of the gas in that region, and some of it is sideways so that we're seeing the reflection of it. But on the other hand, if you look straight through the dust cloud, then you see something that's reddened. So because some of that blue light has been removed in Bernard 68, if we look in the infrared, we see the long wavelengths that have passed. Okay, oops. So just to test that idea, um, let's suppose that this is my interstellar gas and dust cloud. Which of the colors would the solid lines represent? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So the, the longer wavelengths are passing through the cloud the shorter wavelengths are being preferentially scattered. But notice there is one solid line here that I did illustrate as being scattered. 
And there's one dashed line here that made it all the way through. So not all of the short wavelengths are blocked. It's not like a perfect filter, uh, but most of the short wavelengths are, are scattered away um, and less of the long wavelengths are scattered away. And if I wanted to change this question, I wouldn't have to say blue light or red light. I could say, I don't know, violet light and yellow light and the principle would still apply. I could say visible light and infrared light and the principle would still apply because any anytime I choose here a longer wavelength, the longer wavelength will be the one that preferentially makes it through compared to the shorter wavelength. In the case of visible light and how this plays out on planet Earth, though, it's literally red and blue. <laughs> so the white light that we see from the sun because it peaks in the visible spectrum has a, a fairly equal distribution of red and blue light on either side of the you know peak that's somewhere in the greenish. And the scattering is responsible for the blue sky that we see on days that are different than today. And the red light that we see from the sunset is the effect of reddening. And the reason that we don't see this red effect all the time is because there's, um, there's as uh, when we're at sunset, then the, the light from the sun is passing through a higher amount of total uh, mass of gas in the atmosphere because it's low on the horizon. So it's basically skimming their horizon through a lot more gas than it is when it's overhead and there's a shorter amount of total atmosphere to go through. So the scattering effect is the reason we see blue sky. The reddening effect is the reason we see red sunsets. And this also explains why you see more red sunsets when there's um, you know, a lot of smoke in the air, um, like when we had the wildfires, because there's those um, dust particles scatter even more light. So the light that makes it through very dusty air is even more red compared to the less dusty clean air. So the, um, the grains of dust in the interstellar dust clouds are maybe a little bit different than dust that you think about like in your house. Um, the, the core of these grains is a solid material, it tends to be made of either silica, which is sandy material, <coughs> or carbon, which is like a sooty material. And then the mantle around them is so-called icy. Astronomers call basically anything heavier than helium ice. So, eh take that with a grain of salt, I guess. But the, the mantles of them are formed of molecules. So they are very cold and it's made of primarily water, methane and ammonia. Uh, oh, sorry, methane is CH4, ammonia and H3. And the size of these is very small. So it's more like uh, smoke particles than the type of dust grain size that you would have in your house. The reason that we know it's this big is because that scattering effect that we just talked about is most effective when light particles are on the same size of the wavelength of light. So we know that they must be close to the visible size of light, but it has to be a little bit shorter than that. Otherwise, it, the dust wouldn't do an effective job of blocking the light. So that's how we know the size of these dust grains is by observing what it does to the starlight that passes through it. Let's suppose that we have these four spectra. Um, spectrum A is white light, meaning that it has an equal intensity at all light wavelengths. I'm looking only at the visible part of the spectrum here. Supposing that you have light passing through a cloud where the particles are similar in size to the wavelength of visible light, then which one of these would best illustrate that filtered spectrum? Yep, that's how I was thinking about it too. So if we start out with a white light spectrum equal intensity for every visible wavelength, and then our scattering process removes the short wavelengths more than it removes the red wavelengths, then um, there should be less intensity in the blue purple side of the spectrum, which is what we see in D, and more intensity left in the red part of the spectrum. And so C and B both have more intensity in the blue and purple so maybe this could be what we see if we're not looking directly through the cloud, but if we're looking at a reflection nebula off the, to the side of the cloud. 